This is the Sabbath School lesson for the second quarter, 2021. Lesson 9 for May 22 to 28, Covenant Sign. Friday, May 28. The Ten Commandments define comprehensively and fundamentally the divine human and human human relationships. The commandment at the centre of the Decalogue is the Sabbath commandment. It identifies the Lord of the Sabbath in a special way and indicates his sphere of authority and ownership. Note these two aspects. 1. The identity of the deity, Yahweh, Lord, who is the creator, as we read in Exodus 20 verse 11, For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And Exodus 31 verse 17, It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And who thus holds a unique place. 2. The sphere of his ownership and authority. Exodus 20 verse verse 11 again. The heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. And once again, Exodus 31 verse 17. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever, for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. In these two aspects, the Sabbath commandment has the characteristics that are typical of seals of international ancient Near Eastern treaty documents. These seals are typically in the centre of the treaty documents and also contain 1. the identity of a deity, usually a pagan god, and 2. the sphere of ownership and authority, usually a limited geographical area. And from the Ellen G. White comments from the Seventh-day Adventist Bible Commentary, Volume 7, page 980 and 981, we read, The sanctification of the Spirit signalises the difference between those who have the seal of God and those who keep a spurious rest day. When the test comes, it will be clearly shown what the mark of the beast is. It is the keeping of Sunday. God has designated the seventh day as his Sabbath, as we read in Exodus 31.13, Speak also to the children of Israel, saying, Surely my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. And verse 17, It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever, for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And verse 16, Therefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations as a perpetual covenant. Thus the distinction is drawn between the loyal and the disloyal. Those who desire to have the seal of God in their foreheads must keep the Sabbath of the fourth commandment. End of quote. And that brings us to our two discussion questions for this week. 1. Read Leviticus 19, verse 30. Notice how it links the sanctuary and the Sabbath. Considering what we have learned so far about what the Sabbath is a sign of, why does that linkage make so much sense? Leviticus 19 and verse 30. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. 2. Ask yourself this question. Has Sabbath-keeping helped strengthen my walk with the Lord? If not, what changes can you make? And now for a summary of this week's lesson. The Sabbath is a covenant sign that reaches forward to the time when the plan of salvation will be consummated. It points back to creation, and as a sign of the covenant of grace, it points us to the final recreation, when God makes all things new. Inside Story Our mission story this week is titled Balling Tattoo Artist, and it's by Andrew McChesney of Adventist Mission. Dr. Hernando Diaz was assisting a patient at the Adventist Medical Centre in Melodon, Colombia, when a shadowy figure at his office door startled him. 
It was a shaven-headed man covered with explicit tattoos. Tattoos formed a black and blue web over his head. Tattoos covered his arms and hands. "'It's my turn to see you,' the man declared. "'Please wait for your turn,' Hernando said. Several minutes later, the man entered the office and immediately broke into tears. The big, burly bloke was bawling like a baby." Hernando looked at the man's paperwork. It said he was HIV positive. I don't want to have HIV, the man said, tears streaming down his tattooed cheeks. What happened? Hernando asked. What do you do? I'm a tattoo artist and the body is my canvas, the man said. How did you contact HIV? Are you promiscuous or a homosexual? The man said he was neither and had contracted... HIV through his work. But I don't want HIV, he said. I don't want to die. There is someone who can heal you, Hernando said. I know you may not believe in God, but he can help you. The man acknowledged being an atheist, but he was willing to reconsider. Do you want me to pray for you, Hernando said. Do you want to accept Jesus as your saviour? Yes, the man said, weeping. Hernando led the man through the sinner's prayer. When the man said Jesus' name at the end, he fell to the floor. Hernando sent the tattoo artist away for a second HIV test. The next week, the man returned with a happy grin on his face. I don't have HIV, he said. I want to give thanks to God and you because God has healed me. Follow-up testing had given him a clean bill of health. He considered his HIV negative status to be a miracle from God. Months later, Hernando and his wife, Erica, were shopping at a mall when they heard someone screaming, Doctor! Doctor! The tattoo artist ran over to Hernando and lifted him off the ground in an enormous bear hug. He praised God for working a miracle in his life. The tattoo artist is one of dozens of people led to Jesus by Hernando, a 60-year-old Seventh-day Adventist physician serving at the Adventist Medical Center on the campus of Columbia Adventist University in Medellin. This quarter's 13th Sabbath offering will help open a missionary training center at Columbia Adventist University. This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. It's supported by the Sabbath School Department and Hope Channel Australia and is rebroadcast by Christian Record Services and through podcasts at It Is Written in the United States, Hope Channel Germany and through Apple iTunes and SoundCloud. Remember, God is always faithful.